Yo, what's up YouTube? I'm back here with another reaction video. Today we got what NBA players actually eat. And I feel like this is a very interesting topic uh, to make a video off of because as someone who's played sports, as someone who works out, I pretty much know that your diet can and does make a difference for most people. Now, some people, like T.O., eat McDonald's every day, still perform at the highest level. And there are other high-level players that we probably don't know probably have the same type of eating habits. But for most people, you can still play at a high level or work out at a high level and eat junk. But if you change your diet, if you eat good 70% of the time, you'd be surprised at how much better you perform. Like, it's really crazy. Like, you thought you was already on 10, you was on 7. You could get to 10 if you change the way you eat and the way you diet, your sleeping habits, what you're drinking. It's really wild. So, interested to see what they, they got to bring and present in this video. So, let's get into it. You'd think NBA players eat healthy, but Dwight Howard's diet nearly got him killed. Back in 2004 when Dwight was first drafted, even though he was a pro NBA player, he was just like any other 18-year-old kid. He didn't care about eating healthy. Behind the scenes, he was hooked on sugar. As I got older, it just kept going. I just started to love Skittles, and all I wanted was Skittles, 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 and Starburst, and, and then I just, you know, I couldn't stop. But by 2012, what seemed like a harmless sweet tooth turned into a deadly addiction. Because while playing for the Lakers, Dwight was downing over 840 grams of sugar a day. That's 11 times more than the average American. See what I'm saying? That's crazy. Now, obviously athletes, they have to eat a lot more because of how much harder and how much more they're working out. But that's still ridiculous. Like, if sugar, candy, Skittles? 11. And all of that candy was killing Dwight from the inside out. His stomach was inflamed, he was constantly getting injured, and worst of all, he was losing feeling in his body. Even sitting down in his chair right now, uh, it's causing my legs to go numb and, you know, just have just this tingly sensation all the way down my legs. So that happens when I'm playing. Uh, that happens. You know, when I'm just sitting on the bench for a couple minutes, you know, and it's not easy. This was a telltale sign of type 2 diabetes. Imagine if he so, wasn't a professional Dwight called athlete. up a Lakers physician for some advice. When she learned and about Dwight's candy had. addiction, she was horrified, telling Dwight that if he didn't drop the habit, he might not only lose his NBA career, but he could lose his life. And when Dwight heard that, he knew what had to be done. I want to live for a long time. And uh, I, I told myself I was going to have to change up what I eat, what I drink. And, you know, once I did that, it was it was just like, OK, this is simple. And I got rid of all the candy and I was like, I can't do this no more. Now, Dwight may have needed to switch his diet up, but he's not alone because we almost lost the diesel all because of his diet. Shaq See, too? in early 2020, Shaq was at rock bottom. He was dealing with the tragic passing of his sister Aisha, his best friend Kobe Bryant, and 28 other close friends. 28. So to cope with his pain, Shaq turned to the only thing that brought him comfort. Food. And lots of it. From late night sandwich runs to cookies and cake, Shaq was drowning his sorrows in calories. And after just a few months of binge eating, the scale started to tip as eventually, he reached his heaviest weight ever, 415 pounds. By mid-2020, Shaq was in the worst shape of his life, helplessly eating himself to death. But one conversation- I'm gonna speak on that too, like, 2020, a lot of people, a lot of people did that as well. Like, being in the house, being in quarantine, they didn't know nothing else to do besides eat. Couldn't go to their jobs, probably losing their jobs. Wow. But I also like to say a lot of people change their life and their lifestyle from being in the house so long. They say, you know what, I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. I'm going to take it to another level. I'm going to start working out every day in the house, in the garage, taking runs, taking walks. And I'm going to just change my lifestyle while the world's pretty much on pause. 
And I applaud those people. I really do. But it's unfortunate that other people did the same stuff. And it didn't really work out for them. Obviously, Shaq's cool now. But it's crazy here. Changed everything. So I did something I've never did before. I went to a doctor. And the doctor used that three-letter word that you never want to hear. He said, do you want to die? He said, no, I don't want to die. He said, you got you to gotta change some things up. You know, I have sleep apnea and it causes a whole bunch of other problems. So now I sleep with a CPAP machine, but, you know, you just want to, I want to be around for a while. So I, I eat a lot better than I was. Yeah, Shaq completely revamped his diet, losing over 50 pounds and grew a six pack for the first time in over 15 years. Yeah, so Shaq. it looks like the big man's here to stay. But I can't say the same for Zion, because this man is literally eating himself out of the NBA as we speak. I mean, when he was drafted in 2019, he was already one of the heaviest players, weighing 285 pounds. And as soon as he moved to New Orleans, it was a recipe for disaster. This man Zion was double fisting crab legs, and his weight started getting really out of hand. To the point where, not only did the Pelicans have to change their entire culinary practice just for Zion, but his own mom had to step in and force him to change his diet, saying, all the sauce, bacon, that stuff, he can't have that. Instead, he's sticking to salmon. Uh, Mama Zion? I don't think this diet's working. Your son fat as hell! In fact, during the 2021 season, it was rumored that Zion had ballooned to over 330 pounds. I mean, just to put that into perspective, this chart is every NBA player's body mass index. We got DeMarcus Cousins at 28.2, Nikola Jokic at exactly 29, and then we have Zion at 38.1. The only player in the NBA that is medically obese. And not only that, but Zion is also on rebound payroll. So if you don't drop a like and subscribe to the channel, Zion is going to sit on you. And trust me, dog, you don't want that to happen. So what are you doing? Subscribe. But anyways, to make matters even worse, Skip Bayless reported Zion still likes to eat whole pizzas and wash them down with high sugar soft drinks. Uh, so you know, stuff like this kind of irritates me. Like, where do you get this information from? Like, unless Zion is saying this himself or someone like his mom or someone who lives with him is telling all this. Like, who are y'all sources? I just hate rumors that, like, have no, no, they're not even stories, they're, they're rumors with no credibility. That kind of irritates me. And for those of y'all that don't know, they, I think he's almost done talking about Zion. Yeah, he's about to go to MJ. Zion, go, from now, like, go on Zion's Instagram now. He turned all that around. Like, he's not super skinny, but he definitely shed off a lot of weight and started doing his thing, so... You know I mean? You gotta applaud the wins. You gotta applaud the wins for real, for real. Oh, if this man doesn't put the fork down soon, Zion's gonna eat himself out of the league for good. No. And let me also speak on this too. I know I'm not trying to defend him or nothing, but like, I know. Like from being in the same situations. When you injure yourself, which is why Zion was not playing, you're not allowed to do any working out or anything like that. So you think, well, not that you should just be eating or whatever, but Zion's probably taking in the same amount of food he was when he was playing, when he was injured. So, obviously, with him not working out, he's going to gain some weight if he's eating the same way. Now, should he have known? Yeah, let me cut back. But once he first got hurt, he probably wasn't thinking about none of that. And then not only is he still, like, after he gets hurt, he has to go through rehab which caused him to lose the whole season. And you're still not able to go do much. And I think he had like an ankle injury or something like that. So cardio, out the door, none of that. Just a lot of stretching and a lot of like slight movement, you know? But just, again, just to let y'all know, cause people, people be saying stuff, but they don't really be knowing like the other side of the story. So. Now, Zion might need a diet to stay in the NBA, but Michael Jordan, on the other hand, he needed his diet to win an NBA championship. See, back in the 80s, there was one thing standing between Jordan and his first ring, the size. 
At just 195 pounds, Jordan couldn't compete with the bad boy Pistons. They knocked him out of the playoffs year after year. And after being eliminated for the third straight season, Jordan had enough, saying, I was getting brutally beaten up by the Pistons, and I wanted to start fighting back. So during the 1990 offseason, Jordan went to work, hiring the greatest NBA trainer of all time, Tim Grover, to sculpt him into a goat by coming up with a diet that would change Jordan's career forever. Five small meals a day, consisting of 70% carbs, 20% fats, and 10% proteins. Jordan got- You know what I'm saying? Like eating five meals a day? That's wild. That's really wild the fuel he needed to lift five days a week and bulk up. And Grover's regimen worked. Because by the end of the summer, Jordan had put on 15 pounds. The man was yoked. So during the 90-91 season, Jordan became the bad boy, using his new muscle to sweep the Pistons 4-0 in the playoffs before winning his first ever NBA championship. Man, it's crazy how food can have that big of an impact. But it's not the only thing that can have a huge impact on an NBA career. The people you surround yourself with are just as important. I mean, some NBA players, they get involved with gangs, and the next thing you know, their career's over because they just murdered someone. Huh, you want to hear more about that? Well, then click this video right here, because this NBA player literally murdered someone. I, I ain't know nothing about that. I ain't gonna speak on that. Hey, but that's, that's something for a different video. If y'all want me to react to that, I got y'all. But I'm probably not going to. I don't want to speak on that man. But, yeah, this was an interesting video. Honestly, I feel like he could have did way more people. Um, but I guess this is the information he had and from the research he did. So it was still a pretty entertaining video. Um, the one that stuck out the most, I would say the Dwight Howard one. I, did, I had no idea. I really had no idea. I knew he said he had a sweet tooth because I actually watched that interview. It was a Taylor Rooks interview where he said, like, he was eating. Well, he said he had a sweet tooth and he like Skittles and stuff like that. I actually watched that interview, but I had no idea. Like, he couldn't sit down and he had diabetes and all that stuff. I didn't know nothing about that. But that's going to end this reaction video. I'm not going to tell you to like, comment, share, or subscribe. Because if y'all rock with me, I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm going.